Um, the search for a father and son has ended. Texas Parks and Wildlife game wardens discovered their bodies in Point Comfort on Tuesday. And with a record-breaking hurricane season predicted this year, FEMA prepares to help those in storm-affected areas. Plus, an update about a Michigan man with a suspended license who called into a court hearing while driving. And there's a big old outflow boundary possibly bringing us here in the crossroads. Maybe a couple showers and thunderstorms later this afternoon, but after the showers and thunderstorm chances, we are right back to the heat. We'll take a look down the weather coming up. She ran track at Goliad, then at the University of Texas. Now she's one step closer to the Paris 2024 Olympics. I'll have that in sports. You're watching 25 News Now Sunrise. Good morning and thank you for joining us. I'm Carolina Astrain. And I'm Parker Cox. And today it's the fifth day of June 2024. It's now 631 on our Wednesday morning and it's gingerbread day. Gingerbread day. That's a yummy day. <laughs> Do you like gingerbread? Oh yeah. I love gingerbread, ginger snaps. I love ginger root. <laughs> you, like, you like the ginger flavor? Ginger tea. Mm, ginger tea? I didn't even know that was a thing. Oh yeah, it's delicious. Interesting. Well, Parker, how is it looking out there? We're going to be steeping today. <laughs> Steep. Oh, there you go. Well, Carolina, yeah, it's going to be another pretty warm day today, but there is hope for some showers and thunderstorms possibly coming our way this afternoon. We'll take a look at that in just a second, because right now, if you're tuning in with us this morning, you're looking live in eastern Victoria, and look at that as that sun's starting to slowly, slowly come up. It's exposing that cloud cover that we have over this of us this morning, but it's also exposing a little bit of that very, very thin layer of fog that we were talking about just a little bit earlier this morning. But right now, like I said, it is plenty warm out there, 82 degrees and plenty humid, sitting at 90% right now because your dew point is three degrees off from that temperature. So please be careful. Some of us, very select few of us, might see a very, very thin layer of fog like you just saw there on the camera, but some of us will be seeing some showers and thunderstorms possibly coming away this afternoon. And you're probably wondering where are they at? I don't see them. They're up north. They just exited the Dallas, uh, Dallas Fort Worth area of the Metroplex not too long ago, about an hour ago. And you could see it marching south. It is hauling, it is hauling coming down here pretty quick. And actually, in fact, looking at your future radar here, you can see as we go into the afternoon, uh, this is the, the brand new, the newest computer model that just came out about 30 minutes ago. You can see it just brought back the chances up again going down. It's a little bit later though, right around 3, 4 p.m. You can see maybe a couple ice weighted showers, thunderstorms as well. The good news is I'm not thinking any severe weather for today. Maybe one storm might have locally strong gusts, the gusty winds, and very, very small hail, but I don't think anything severe is coming away today. But uh, what is kind of severe uh, that is coming our way today is the heat and that is coming our way this weekend as well. And they already have heat advisories that you just saw there. And that's going to be for today because today before the storms, it's going to be plenty warm. I'm thinking right around 93, 94 here in Victoria, but out west, maybe in the mid to upper 90s before the storms. But after the storms, like I said, we are plenty hot this weekend. And we're going to take a look at all that in just a few more moments. Back to Carolina. Thank you, Parker. The search for a missing Calhoun County father and son has ended. The Port Lavaca Wave reports the bodies of Benedicto Jaramillo and his son Angel were found Tuesday afternoon. Calhoun County Sheriff Bobby Vickery confirmed the bodies were discovered near the old Alcoa plant in Point Comfort by Texas Parks and Wildlife game wardens. On Saturday, the father and son were reported missing after they failed to return from a shrimping trip. Their boat was found capsized in the Matagorda ship channel after a storm. Early Sunday morning, the Coast Guard suspended its search, but local volunteers continue to search the area. The family has set up a GoFundMe page to help with vessel recovery and funeral expenses. In Refugio County, emergency workers transported a man to the hospital. DPS reports 42-year-old Robolin Rivia of Tivoli traveled westbound on State Highway 239 when his 1998 Chevrolet Silverado pickup went down an embankment and rolled over on its passenger side. DPS says Rivia was ejected from the vehicle during the rollover and he was not wearing a seatbelt. With a record-breaking hurricane season predicted this year, FEMA is getting prepared to help as many people as possible. Latanya hopes with FEMA says the agency has already rolled out their preventative mitigation plan, which involves hiring additional staff, securing office locations in possible impact areas, and using lessons learned from past hurricane seasons to better help the community. 
mitigation focuses on prevention. So for places that may have um, incurred damages, serious damage during last hurricane season, there's tons of work that's already going on to help in preparation should there be a need to respond. The officials with FEMA urge everyone impacted by a natural or man-made disaster to apply for benefits. New programs have been introduced that will help more people qualify for benefits. And that leads us to your viewer poll. Can you, you can scan the QR code right there on your screen to take part. We ask you, do you feel prepared for hurricane season? Okay, let's take a look. 27% of you say yes and 73% of you say no. Come to crossroadstoday.com slash vote to take part in our viewer poll. The Victoria Police Department is accepting signups for Camp Cameron. Children ages 10 to 14 will get the opportunity to learn about police work, police vehicles, canine units, clearing buildings, handcuffing, traffic stops, and performing CPR with hands-on activities throughout the camp. They will also participate in team building exercises to develop social skills, leadership, and positive thinking. You can sign up through June 10th at victoriatx.gov forward slash police to download the forms. Camp fees are $60 and include snacks, meals, a t-shirt, and a day pass to Outlaw Pass. The camp is 20... The camp is from June 24th through the 27th from 8 a.m. to noon. Camp Cameron is named after nine-year-old Cameron Lee, a cancer patient who dreamed of becoming a police officer. President Biden has signed an executive order to slow the influx of migrants at the U.S.-Mexico border. The order temporarily shuts down asylum requests once the average number of daily encounters between official ports of entry tops 2,500 and reopens when the number falls to 1,500. The threshold has already been met. White House officials also say that migrants applying for asylum without credible fear will be removed from the country. The executive action also makes it impossible for migrants to seek asylum if they cross the border illegally. We'll go to Washington for more later. And that story out of Michigan about a man with a suspended license who called into a court hearing while driving has taken a surprising twist. Court documents say the man in the now viral video, Corey Harris, had already had his, his license suspension rescinded. Saginaw County court records reveal Harris's license should have been reinstated in January of 2022. Apparently, the Michigan Secretary of State's office never received notice of the ruling due to a clerical error. The Detroit Free Press says Harris spent two days in jail after the viral hearing. And remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today. Hit the like button and click the notification bell. The time is now 6.38 on our Wednesday morning. Here's a look at what's coming up on 25 News Now Sunrise. Residents are abandoning their unwanted waterfowl at the newly renovated and expanded duck pond. President Biden's executive action at the border has gone into effect immediately. So what's actually changed? I'm Christiane Cordero with the details in Washington. And also coming up after the break, we'll take a look at your marine forecast, followed by your weather and health forecast. And later on sunrise, we'll take another look at that real heat that is coming our way the next few days.
Well, good morning, Crossroads. If you're all tuning in with us this morning, you're looking live in Cuero. A little bit, a little bit humid out there, and it's a little bit enough for some of us to see. You can kind of see it here on this camera. Very, very thin fog out there. Very thin fog out there this morning, but it is plenty warm out there. Right now, 82 degrees, and like I said, plenty humid. It's 90% right now. That's because your dew point is 3 degrees off from that temperature. But today, it's going to be another pretty warm day today. I'm thinking right around 94 here in Victoria. Out west, maybe even up in Cuero, y'all could get up to the upper 90s, maybe even mid, uh, mid to upper 90s for just a few moments, but very warm, humid with maybe a couple of spotty thunder showers in the afternoon time. And it looks like the newest models are thinking that might be just the case. We might get lucky with a little bit of rain today, but with the rain possible today, uh, be iffy if you want to go fishing today. Slightly choppy bays between one to three feet high and your gust up about 20 knots out of the south southeast. Making it away is, like I said, a little bit choppy for today, but with the winds a little bit breezy today, grass pollen is going to be high today. Air quality is going to be a little unhealthy for sensitive groups and your UV and DX is going to be very high before the storms. But after that, we are going to be sunny and hot and we're going to take a look at that in just a few more moments. And that's it for weather. Now we're going to look at sports with Zach Brown. Former Goliad grad and track superstar Ashton Zamzo Mahler having quite the track and field career. She has qualified for the U.S. Olympic pre-trials, accumulating 6,500 points at the Texas Greatest Athlete Meet this past Saturday in Dallas. The U.S. Olympic trials are scheduled for June 23rd and 24th in Eugene, Oregon. This ahead of the summer games that will be in Paris beginning late July. Zamzo. She's no stranger to success winning state in her Goliad day. She actually originally competed at Texas A&M, then became a Texas Longhorn, where she ranked very high nationally. Now she hopes to add more medals to her already impressive list. With your 25 Sports Now, I'm Zach Brown. Thank you, Zach. All right, we want to invite you all to experience our digital streaming service, Crossroads Today Plus. You can find it on your connected TV through Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, and Android TV. Just search for Crossroads Today Plus. President Joe Biden's executive action on the southern border went into effect overnight. It limits the number of migrants who enter the U.S. illegally from staying here as they seek asylum. The move is already getting pushback from both sides. This morning, sweeping new rules for migrants at the southern border. In an aggressive executive action, President Biden immediately shutting down the asylum process in the U.S. for people crossing the border illegally once migrant apprehensions averaged 2,500 a day over the course of a week. Doing nothing is not an option. We have to act. The rules would hold until unscheduled apprehensions dip below 1,500 per day for two weeks. There are limited exceptions for unaccompanied children and victims of human trafficking, and there is no limit on the legal process at ports of entry. The administration says something needed to be done to break months-long opposition to a bipartisan border security bill from congressional Republicans and, and their party's our standard bearer. The Republicans in Congress got a call from Donald Trump, don't do the deal. Because, you see, he'd prefer to run on a problem instead of fixing a problem. Former President Trump is now among the Republicans, saying Biden's move is too little, too late. The truth is that Joe Biden's executive order won't stop the invasion. It's weak and it's pathetic. Immigration advocates worry the executive order will only worsen the already months-long backlog at border crossings and endanger migrants. What we are expecting now is that the Biden administration will weaponize what's left of our asylum system to criminalize migrants. The president risking legal and political blowback from all sides, including progressives who worry with Republicans not budging on their stance against Biden, the move could backfire. I think in the end we end up hurting the very people that we're fighting for. The ACLU says it plans to challenge Biden's action in court. Christiane Cordero, ABC News, Washington. Victoria City leaders have noticed more ducks at the new duck pond at Riverside Park. They've determined people are dropping off unwanted ducks. Mixing domestic duck, domesticated ducks and wild ducks can cause several issues. We have been witnessing uh, a lot of ducks being um, taken to our duck pond. And so while we realize the uh, intent behind that may be to um, get rid of these ducks, um, it is causing uh, havoc on our natural wildlife. Uh, some of the other ducks that have been being dropped off, um, you know, they're territorial and clashing with each other um, and, and just you know, we need to stabilize that environment. 
If you have ducks that need a new home, you are encouraged to contact the Texas Parks and Wildlife. The time is now 646 on our Wednesday morning, still to come. The honor of being the second biggest soda brand behind Coca-Cola goes to a Texas brand soda. Okay, it is time to celebrate some birthdays. Happy birthday to Sharon. Happy birthday, Sharon, from your team. Look at that baby with those sunglasses. Oh, that's so sweet. Happy birthday, <laughs> Sharon. And happy birthday to actor and comedian Nick Kroll with their birthday today. He's turning 46, the big mouth co-creator. And I said this already. I can see now it now. Do you see it? He now, does look like now Pete I Davidson. Can see it. But Pete Davidson doesn't have that much okay, facial okay. hair. That and he's true. much younger. That is true. That is true. <laughs> and happy birthday to American smooth jazz saxophonist, composer, and producer Kenny G. I think smooth jazz is an understatement. He is a great, great sax artist. Happy birthday, Kenny. And to see your birthday wish live on 25 News Now Sunrise, come to CrossroadsToday.com, click on More, and under Home, you'll see KVU to submit your birthday. All right, the time is now 6.47 on our Wednesday morning. Happy birthday if you're celebrating one today. That's right, happy birthday. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Well, good morning, Crossroads. What I've been saying all morning is that heat is coming and actually coming over the next few days, a little bit earlier than astronomical summer starts. That's on June, 20, uh, June 21st, but uh, meteorological summer started on the first day of June, and it sure feels like that because looking at your next five days, we're going to be in the upper 90s. 
Some of us could be in the low to mid hundreds, maybe even upper hundreds, possibly. That's going to be between 105 and 109. That's what upper 100 is. But looking at your temperatures for tomorrow, this is going into tomorrow afternoon. That is, you can see out west, they're already going to be in the low hundreds. And then this is possible, by the way, 103. But it is definitely, definitely likely. But what is very likely is all of us will be seeing your heat indices. That's the feels like temperatures. Those are going to be surpassing 100 easily for all of us here in the crossroads. And you can see out west, they could see heat to see feeling like 113, 114 today. That's today and even tomorrow as well. And that's why the National Weather Service has the heat advisories. And that's going to extend for probably the next few days. So make sure to stay hydrated and take frequent breaks. Look in your heat safety tips. Make sure to also limit your strenuous outdoor activities. Also make sure to check on the elderly and pets and also maybe your next door neighbors as well. Make sure that their AC is working and find that cool zone to take a break from the heat. But we're going to take a look at all of that more though in just a few more moments. Back to Carolina. Thank you, Parker. And speaking of staying hydrated, Pepsi is no longer the second biggest soda brand behind Coca-Cola. That honor now goes to Dr. Pepper. Sales data from Beverage Digest says it showed that Dr. Pepper and Pepsi both had just over 8% of the soda market in the U.S. by volume, with Dr. Pepper technically ahead. However, Coca-Cola is still king, the number one soda with a market share more than double the second place competitor. SpaceX launched another batch of Starlink satellites into orbit Tuesday night. The Falcon 9 rocket carrying 20 satellites lifted off from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station at 10.16 p.m. Eastern. 13 of those satellites have direct cell capabilities. This marks the 20th flight for the first stage booster supporting the mission. Starlink uses thousands of satellites to deliver internet service to portable dishes around the world. SpaceX has previously, has previously said Starlink has more than 2 million in 60 different countries. Still to come on Sunrise, news to know before you go. A possible ceasefire and hostage release deal between Israel and Hamas. Senior Biden administration officials are headed to the Middle East this week for talks on a possible ceasefire and hostage release deal between Israel and Hamas. They will also address the dire situation in the Gazan city of Rafah. CIA Director Bill Burns, who has been the administration's point man on negotiations, is expected to travel to Qatar. 
The Qataris are acting as intermediaries in talks between Israel and Hamas. Middle East coordinator Brett McGurk is also headed back to the region. The visit comes amid a furious diplomatic push by Biden and his administration to get Hamas and Israel to accept the latest ceasefire proposal. A federal corruption trial against New Jersey Senator Bob Menendez is now in its fourth week. On Tuesday, two FBI investigators took to the stand to detail what they heard between Menendez and others while he dined at a D.C. steakhouse in 2019. Menendez his wife, Nadine, and two New Jersey businessmen are accused of engaging in a bribery scheme during those dinners. They allegedly acted as foreign agents for the Egyptian government. On Tuesday, one of Menendez's attorneys argued prosecutors were unfairly attempting to paint a May 2019 dinner as co-conspirators plotting their crimes. Travis County District Attorney asked a court to overturn Daniel Perry's recent pardon. Perry is a former U.S. Army sergeant convicted in 2023 for murdering a protester in Austin during a Black Lives Matter rally in 2020. Last month, Governor Greg Abbott pardoned him and he was released from prison. On Tuesday, the District Attorney asked the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals to vacate the governor's pardon. Perry was sentenced to 25 years in prison for fatally shooting 28-year-old Air Force veteran Garrett Foster. The shooting happened two months after the murder of George Floyd in Minneapolis. Arizona voters will weigh in this fall on a ballot measure that would allow local law enforcement to arrest migrants who illegally cross the border. Texas, excuse me, Tuesday, state lawmakers approved a bill that will allow the measure to appear on the ballot in November. If voters approve the measure, the law, then law enforcement would be able to arrest migrants who cross into the country without going through official ports of entry. The proposal is similar to a controversial Texas law, which has been blocked from going into effect. The City of Point Comfort issued a boil water notice yesterday morning. It's still in effect until further notice. Authorities say an issue with the water treatment and water tower occurred. Low water pressure from the water tower enacted the boil notice. And Victoria ISD has a special meeting today at 3.30. That's at 102 Profit Drive. They're going to review proposals for a search firm as it looks for its new superintendent. And they'll select search firms that they want to meet with at their June 10th board meeting. And we want to invite you to experience our digital streaming service, Crossroads Today Plus. You can find it on your connected TV through, Ama through Amazon Fire TV or Roku, Apple TV, Android TV. Just search for Crossroads Today Plus. Parker, I needed a little bit more caffeine this morning. <laughs> <laughs> and it's cloudy. It's a cloudy sunrise for us. Like once again, Parker, look yeah. at those clouds. Yeah, another cloudy sunrise, just like it has been for the last four or five weeks. But it's also plenty of warm and humid, just like it has been for the last four or five weeks. 83 degrees right now if you're tuning in with us in Port Lavaca this morning. And look, that camera just updated, even prettier. 80 degree dew point out there, very, very wet and humid out there, bringing you a 92% humidity. But there are some showers and thunderstorms that just exited the Dallas area, and I think they might be coming our way going into this afternoon. We've got a glimmer of hope for some rain, folks. In fact, looking at your future radar here, you can see going into, it's gonna actually be a little bit later now in the afternoon. You can see three, four, four, five p.m., maybe a couple ice coated showers and thunderstorms in our area for today, but after the rain is all said and done, we are going to be turning up the heat this weekend. Some out on the western crossroads could be in the mid to upper 100s, Carolina. I know we've it's had like, severe weather, but that rain is something that our farmers definitely oh, need. Oh yes, they're gonna need that rain, definitely. Hopefully we can stay out of drought conditions. Yeah, well, yes, hopefully. All right, well, thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful Wednesday. Remember, follow us on our YouTube channel for more updates and join Karina, Don, Mac, and Zach today for 25 News Now at 5, 6, and 10.